The following is brought to you by the People's National Party. Jamaican people want better. Time it come, it come like stormy weather. Ancestors are turning on them grave. They can tell me how we can do it together. When we look at the future of precipice, we see Jamaica needs the vision of the BSB. People say the bag of promises them can't carry. The following is brought to you by the People's National Party. The following is brought to you by the People's National Party. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday to everyone. Happy Tuesday to those in television land. Happy Tuesday to all our silent viewers. Happy Tuesday to everyone in the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope everyone have, is having a wonderful and productive week so far. So guys, remember when you come in, thumbs up the live, share us out if you can. And if you're new to the channel, please show us some support by subscribing. And to those who recently subscribed, thank you so much for the support and welcome, welcome to the Mystic Sensation family. Tonight's topic is trickle-down economics. Poor um, have gotten poorer. I don't know why it's saying getting. The poor have gotten poorer. Um, so let me just welcome those who are in the chat. Um, Morris Williams was there earlier along with Walking Purpose, Monica Miles. Um, Larith Beckford is here. Um, Truck Life, FG, Andrea Hunt, Don Mel, the Isaacs mm -hmm. family, Cynthia B, special shout out to your channel member, um, Beyond the Echo, um, Una Battle, Freedom, Anna from Team Happy, mega love shout out to you, Anna, Michael, um, Urquhart, Nordster. Mega megawatt vote. <laughs> um, Patricia Williams, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. So um, without any delay, I'm just going to hand over to Baron so I can do some housekeeping. Again, thank you so much for tuning in on this Tuesday evening. Really appreciate each and everyone's support. All right. Thank you, Annie. Uh, as usual for that um, lovely precursor there. 
right? Um, never, you know, um, always a brilliant precursor coming from wifey there. Now, I want to say um, big up um, to all the persons in the chat room. Um, big up um, to all the persons in TV land, right? Big up all Jamaicans locally and in the diaspora. Now, before I begin, I want to um, speak on, um, of course, some potential investigation that we have, right? Um, but that investigation, we will be dealing with that on Friday. That is really a deep dive into ADMAT. And so Friday, of course, is going to be um, really you know, heat in the house. Uh, we'll be having um, Major um, Robert Finzi back in the house with us on Friday. Uh, we have reached out to Anessa, Anessa Bellrose. Would like her to be a part um, of the program on Friday. However, um, she will be getting back to me um, later in the week. Um, to have that um, confirmed. And of course, we'll be having Aromatic back in studio um, with us, right, to deal with that um, detailed investigation into ADMAT itself. Um, we have a lot of information there for you guys. And that is something that I will be definitely anticipating for Friday. Right, um, the coming Saturday, of course, um, I am going to be on Rattigan, um, uh, Reason with Rattigan. I will be on Reason with Rattigan um, coming um, this Saturday, right? Um, they will start, um, you know, uh, might be a hour or two hour um, ahead of uh, my arrival. But um, certainly I have confirmed, right, to be on <clears throat> Rattigan coming um, this Saturday. And guys, um, remember that um, we need to support um, Rattigan, um, what, it, um, what we call it again? Um, the fun that is. Um... Rattigan um, fun, right? Um, because it is imperative that we support, right, um, that movement. It's indeed a movement um, as it relates to our own interests, right? And Rattigan is doing, you know, a lot in that regard in terms of taking on the issues pertaining to, right, good governance and making sure that, um, of course, we get good um, governance. And if... You know, we have to drag these people through the judiciary, right? Omega Ball said, um, one Jamaica, one Jamaica legal, defense le fund. legal Defense Fund, right? Please, people, I'm asking you to continue to support it because it is a good movement as it relates to, you know, the reason for holding government um, accountable, right? So looking forward for Saturday. Right, as I said, I confirmed um, I will be on Rattigan show um, coming um, Saturday. All right, that being said, right, we are going to get into um, the heat of things. And I realize that the Jamaican government is hell bent on sending Jamaican. JDF into arms way. Let me put it that way. Right as it relates to the, the Asian situation. And that situation seems to be getting worse. And I don't know the reason why, right? Our government um, chose to want to deploy um, our soldiers there, right? And I believe that for persons who the nation who responsible to make Haiti what it is. Those are the, you know, the nation who need, who, who need to go um, to Haiti and resolve 
um, nation problem, right? Why, why, why using us for that, right? And so then I am going to just read as it relates to, right, um, a late, the latest update where that is um, concerned. So, um, honey, um, you want to lift that document up? Um, Canadian Armed Forces members deployed to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. One sec, I'm just trying to. Right. So we are going to um show the um the status of that. All right. So here we have it. Here we have it, my people. Um, yes, here we have it. Um, Canadian Forces personnel deployed to Jamaica to train troops for 80 mission. 70 Canadian um, Force members to work with military personnel from Jamaica, Belize, Bahamas, right? The Canadian mission in Jamaica, known as Operation Elios, will see. Right, Canadian Forces members provide training on core peacekeeping skills and combat first aid to Caribbean troops deploying on the Kenyan led security mission to Haiti. The Department of National Defense said Saturday. Approximately 70 Canadian Armed Forces members were deployed to Jamaica on Friday to train military personnel from several Caribbean countries who are bound. For Haiti as a part of a multinational security force led by Kenya and back by the United Nations. The Canadian personnel will provide training on core peacekeeping skills and combat first aid um, to troops from Jamaica. Let me read back that over. The Canadian personnel will provide training on core peacekeeping skills and combat first aid to troops from Jamaica, Belize, and Bahamas. Member countries of the Caribbean Economic and Political Bloc, known as CAR CARICOM, the CAF said in a joint press release with the Department of National Defense on Saturday. Now, um, take it away, honey. Um, right? No. Take it away. Please. Yes. Now, let me say this for people who don't really you know, have the knowledge as it relates to Haiti. Haiti, be, Haiti has been given series of puppet government that please the interests of neocolonialists, please the interests of capitalism, of the capitalists. And so then Haiti is struggling, struggling, right, to get good governance in Haiti, right? So that, of course, that government can ensure that they are looking after um, the people's business. But from time to time, right, Haiti has been getting these puppet government. Now, the truth be told, and let me, let me speak on this, right? Because... We have seen, particularly with the United States, right? Who has so-called wanted to assist Haiti and their assistance as it relates to Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton, right? Was, you know, um, totally a shamble as it relates to Haiti. So I'm going to show why the reason that I am not supporting this mission and I want to show people as it relates to what Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton accused her. And that is one of my reasons that I believe that, look, for those who bring arm to Haiti as it relates to damaging Haiti economy, they are the ones who need to go and fix it, right? And don't use us, right? Don't use any black, peop um, black people to go and fix Haiti situation. We did not cause Haiti situation, right? France, right, put Haiti under an economic turmoil, right? That put Haiti on the back of, back of their legs, 
right and cause serious stuffage to Haiti. And France was allowed to do that. For them, France and those nations who stand by and watch and allow France to do that, they need to go and fix Haiti, right? And leave the Caribbean and leave the Caribbean people out of it. Right? Those who damage 80, they need to fix 80. So let me just show people as it relates to why I am coming to this conclusion. All right. Um, US election 2016. Oh, okay. So we are going to show people the history of what really happened and why and why Haiti, right, is fighting the struggle from God he knows when Haiti has been fighting their struggles. Now, look at these people. Haiti protesters blame the Clintons for a litany of ills in their mother country. Right? And this is BBC News, um, Washington by Jude Shireen. Donald Trump has said the work of Bill and Hillary Clinton in Haiti was a disgrace. What really happened? The question asked. The Clinton family, they are crooks. They are thieves. They are liars. Says Asian activist Dahoud Andre. He has been leading protests outside the Clinton Foundation headquarters in Manhattan and Hillary Clinton presidential campaign based in Brooklyn for the last two years. He said protesters from his small activist group, the Committee to Mobilize Against Dictatorship in Haiti, will continue to level their allegations. So far, all unproven if the Democratic candidate wins the White House. Now, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump raised the matter in the third and final presidential debate when he told Mistress Clinton, I was at a little 80 the other day in Florida, and I want to tell you, they ate the Clintons because what happened in 80 with the Clinton Foundation is a disgrace. Mrs. Clinton retorted that she was proud of the foundation's work and pointed out her rival's namesake charity spent money on a life-size portrait of himself. The Clinton's history with the world's first black republic, republic dates back to their 1975 honeymoon when they met a voodoo priest and visited a hotel where Ernest Heming Hemingway one stay. Few could have guessed the two young Americans touring the attractions that December would one day wield such influence over the impoverished Caribbean island nation. Mr. Andre is not alone among his compatriots in blaming the ones and perhaps future first couple for a litany of ills in Haiti. Kim Ives, editor of Haiti Literature newspaper, told the BBC. A lot of Asians are not big fans of the Clintons. That's for sure. The fact the Clintons kind of took over things after the earthquake and did a pretty poor job of it translates to why the Asians have a pretty dim view of them, he added. Replicated mistakes. Mrs. Clinton was Secretary of the State and Mr. Clinton was UN Special Envoy to Haiti when the January 2010 earthquake struck killing an estimated 220,000 people. Some $13.3 billion people. And I want, I, want, I want you all to listen to what happened. Why the Asians hated um, um, the Clintons. Some $13.3 billion, $10.9 billion in pounds was pledged by international donors for aid to recovery. Mr. Clinton was appointed co-chairman of the Interim Haiti Recovery Commission, along with Asian Prime Minister John Max Belver. Now, but the IHRC found itself under fire as frustration mounted at the slow pace of recovery. Its mandate was not renewed by the Asian Parliament in 2011. Where the Haiti quake funding went, and this is an example, as you are seeing here, right where the funding um went and so then for the for the clintons to um be collecting um fund and the of the asians as a result of you know um 
them experience an, an, um, an earthquake. But look how the funds spent people. Right? So between January 2010 and January 2012 and June 12, 9.4 billion total international funding. Now look how it spent. 3 billion from individuals and companies. Right? 6.4 billion from bilateral and multilateral donors who had given into the in, um um the um the Hillary Clinton um fund, right? So she got three billion from individual and companies, and she got another six point four billion from bilateral and multilateral donors, which equate to nine point four billion. But look how it spent people. This is this is what happened. Five point four billion went to non-Asian organization people. Now listen. Just imagine that the Clintons used right um, their platform to collect donations on behalf of the Asians. And the first thing, look at it, 89.8% of the 9.4 billion, which is 5.4 billion, went to non-Asian organizations. This is the first big wrong that Hillary Clinton had done. 580 million went to the Asian government, right? Which is only 9.6%, there it is, right? 36.2 million went to Asian organization, which is 0 0.6. Source Office of the Special Envoy of 80, a US government accountability office report discovered no hint of wrongdoing. Oh, you mean no hint of wrongdoing? But concluded the IHRC decisions were not necessarily aligned with Asian priorities. This couldn't align with Asian priorities. When you collect 9.4 billion on behalf of the Asians to give to um, to give to the Asians, and you take 5.4 billion of that went to non-Asian organization. Mr. Clinton's own office at the UN found 9% of the foreign aid cash went to the Asian government and 0.6% to local organization. This is, this is absolutely cruelty, absolutely wickedness. The bulk of it went to UN agencies. People don't hear that? The bulk of it went to UN agencies, international aid groups, private contractors, and donor countries, right, own civilian and military agencies. Take that away. Let me talk to the people. Let me talk to the people. Right? So when we consider that, right, that them who represent the United States, right, and acting to, to it is aid, pretending as if they are there to genuinely help the Asian. After collect 9.6 billion of donations, right, to give to the Asian people, the Clintons decided, right, to take 5.8 billion of that, right, and give to non-Asians organizations. So you tell me, people, and now, and now, what happened, right? If the United States wanted to help Haiti, all of the donations being collected on behalf of Haiti as a result of the crisis, the earthquake, and so much people died, they would have given it, right? Good sense should prevail and mercy should prevail. If it didn't get even 70% of that, it wouldn't look that bad. It wouldn't look, it wouldn't look bad, um, that bad. But you are going to tell me, people, right? After so much billions of dollars being collected, right? And so then, here it is now that it, right, barbecue, is revolting for good governance, wanting to see Haiti 
free of puppet government that who outside of um, Haiti for some interest wanted, right, to have resources from out of Haiti and so then continue, continue to suppress. That's why I don't deal with capitalists. That's why I don't deal with capitalists, right? Because the absolute greed of these people, the absolute greed of these people. Now, so when you look at that now, okay, they are now staying at the back page, wanting now to send Jamaicans, another Caribbean member, right, to Haiti to clean the mess up. What sort of mess we need to clean up, right? They need to influence France. France needs to be influenced to return the money back to Haiti to build back Haiti's economy. And for other outside interests who continue to pressure Haiti, they need to leave Haiti alone so that the people can build their country. The Haitians don't want outside influences. Right? They just need to leave the people alone. So, all right, that is that, right, as it relates to outside of Jamaican quarters. So, let me speak ten sensation, right? Stop from, tech, stop from putting mouth in a people business. We could come back to our little island, Jamaica. Because we have time in terms of the government wanting to meddle in um, people's affair while a beer spoil fish right, in a Jamaica business, right? Now, the level of corruption, Friday I said, and I said it openly without no apology, that before Jamaica start to see progress of goodwill, progress of good governance, this current DPP has to go, and that is the truth. The DPP stand aside, right, and watch Andrew Honest slowly and surely corrupting the criminal justice system, pushing against constitutional norms, pushing against parliament, parliamentary standards, pushing against the rails of justice. Now, when we see these things, it appears that Andrew Hornes is going down the road of an imperialistic government. Now, what we have seen, Andrew Hornes' behavior mimics dictatorship. And we, the people, have to make sure that the powers that be, as it relates to our general election, that we educate our people to ensure that they have solid information and make the right decision in voting. Now, I am going to. Show Jamaica, right, something as it relates to the reason for me to say what I said about the DPP. And I'm very serious. Our DPP is corrupt, right? Plain and simple. Extremely corrupt. Now I'm going to show an example. And we have to see that the DPP, when it is convenient, utilize delayed tactics as it relates to time overdue. And so then, conveniently, she works in the convenience of that because the law allowed her to do that. Michael Shaw, 
same thing happening here in Jamaica. Exactly, Michael. Now, let me just remind people as it relates to the DPP behavior. And one of the reasons why I want to remind people as it relates to the DPP behavior, I am going to show Jamaican people recently as it relates to 2024, one of our Caribbean islands, right? DPP did not stick aside, right? And see that we are lingering as it relates to the illicit six. And the DPP sit aside, right? Waiting for time to run out or whatever she's waiting on. But I'm going to show you the example of a DPP who stepped in and did not wait. And that DPP is saying that when you act quickly, it's a signal of justice. And I am going to show the world as it relates to what that DPP had done. But look, let me give a reflection in terms of DPP because we know that Patrick Bailey is out there you know, and this DPP decided that she's not going to touch it. She's not going to touch it because Patrick Bailey bought big um, some oh, she It seems like she's very much scared of Patrick Bailey. So, but this is not about Patrick Bailey. This is about other cases. So without any um, delay on it, let us lift up um, NWC president and his wife to escape criminal charges. Okay. Right, just want to show something here. All right, so we are going to share this document. Okay. So we, we all remember, we all remember this situation, Jamaican people. The NWC president and his wife to escape criminal charges despite breaching NRCA Act. So let us... Even, even from the start, even from the headline, right? Obviously, something is wrong. NWC president and his wife to escape criminal charges despite breaching the NRCA Act. Suspended head of the National Water Commission, Mark Bennett, and his wife, attorney at law, Annette Francis Barnett, will not face criminal charges despite being found guilty. Despite being found guilty of breaching the National Resources Conservation Authority Act. The plain breach, but yet, Paula Llewellyn decide not to charge. In a ruling dated January 10, 2024, Director of Public Prosecution, DPP Paula Llewellyn said, though the allegations against the two, we actually agreed, support the laying of criminal charges out of our own mouth against Mark Barnett and Francis Barnett for breaching the environmental permit, which is an, an office under the NRCA, the initiation of prosecution is time sensitive. People, is that enough? It's time sensitive and it has not been initiated within 12 months. No. The DPP, if the DPP care for justice, the DPP would have aware that you have a time sensitive situation and act expeditiously. So the DPP should have aware of this and acted expeditiously, you understand, to bring about justice. Within 12 months of the breach being identified, the criminal action is now statute barred. And this is what Paula Llewellyn has been doing. Corrupting Paula Llewellyn has been doing this. Right to wait out the statute of limitation to utilize the statute of um, limitation conveniently, conveniently. Now take that away. 
take it away. Right? So then I want to show people how I am building the basis of my argument. Right? You are a drama. Don't forget the speaker of the house. Exactly. But my Jamaican people, look at this as it relates to St. Kitts. I am going to show people what St. Kitts done as it relates to dear member of parliament being corrupted and what the DPP had done. Look at the difference as it relates to Paula Llewellyn. And it is not like their um, laws doesn't have status of limitation. Their laws also have status of limitation, but the DPP acted expeditiously to bring about justice. Look at these people and look at the clear defense as it relates to why I said that this DPP is clearly corrupt. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, look at the difference. This is a smaller island than Jamaica. Look at the difference. Caribbean News Global, Bastere St. Kitts, St. Kitts and Navy Director of Public Prosecution, DPP, Adelaide Smith, has filed charges against nine defaulters under the Integrity in Public Life Act. Similar to the Integrity Commission Act, under the Integrity in Public Life Act, section 22.18, as amended. This people, this the DPP, you know, we had for, um for anything to be played out. This DPP participated. Two public officials have been omitted and one extension granted. Per the list published, DPP Smith enforcement action is as followed up to an initial press release issued on January 11, 2024. And public officials who failed to meet the filing deadline of 26 January, 2024. In a press release dated February 1, 2024, DPP Smith advised, as DPP, I am tasked with upholding the rule of law and ensuring the highest standard of integrity among public officials. Um, DPP Paula Llewellyn, right, wouldn't say this. Adding, as of today, the deadline for compliance with the mandatory declaration requirement has passed. It is with regret that we note several public officials have failed to meet this obligation. And so then what is DPP done? done? Look what this DPP had done. Omitted an extension from the list. In accordance with earlier warnings, complaints were filed on January 31, 2023 against public officials who failed to comply. The names of two public officials have been omitted from the list below pending a legal opinion reg um, regarding the effect of their resignations and their obligations to file. Another has requested and been granted an extension until of February on compassionate grounds owing to the death and recent burial of his mother, DPP Smith explained. All the public officials listed in the table below have failed to meet the filing deadline of 26 January 2024. This list represents a diverse range of positions and organizations underscoring the universal applicability of the law to all applica applicable public officials. While I have been made aware that at least one public official has filed since the deadline, the name has still been listed because the deadline of 26 January 24 was finally deadline. And people, let me tell you something. Here, this DPP and sent it's not playing. All of these names who failed to file, here it is, sent it, publish them. It, St. Kitts is not like Jamaica. We have a Paula Llewellyn who sit down and can involve, right? And have the six, the illicit six exposed and put on our foot. You understand? And charge and right? 
to lie on the statutory declaration because Andrew Wallace lied on the statutory declaration and the law clearly stated that if you lie on your statutory declaration, you shall be charged. And it's going three years now. Three years. Andrew Wallace, statutory declaration cannot be verified. And DPP, Paula Lewin, so Paula Lewin, may I show you up? DPP, Paula Lewin, stick. Sits on her top and her ass, not doing anything, right? And where she can force action like this TPP. So this PP, the, the TPP, no, you know, no secret and holding down, holding on arm um, any name. No, number one, Honorable Fitzroy Eddy, Magistrate Judiciary. She failed to file. You understand the DPP push her out. Sandro Engla. General Manager, ZIZ Broadcasting Corp. Ricky Lenrick Lake, Chairman, Urban Development Corp. Rutlin Harris, Member, Public Service Commission. Oral Brady, General Manager, Nivison Air and Seaports Authority. Seven, Stedman Trust, Chairman, Nevlek. Albert Garden, General Manager, Nevlek. Pamela Martin, Chairperson, Nevis Tourism Authority. Combating corruption and maintaining public trust. Yes, DPP, St. Kitts. Indeed, you are combating corruption and you are maintaining the public trust. Paula Lovelin, you don't have none of the public trust to get. The public not trust you. We want you to leave the office and leave Jamaican business alone. You are not there for justice, Paula Llewellyn, right? You need to take an example out of me with DPP. Now, I wish to reiterate the importance of these declarations in combating corruption and maintaining public trust. Thank you, thank you, DPP, thank it. We are, we are I to fail to follow through on my warning of certain prosecution. Not only would the credibility of my office be damaged like oh Paula, Paula, you, you hear what this lady said? You hear what the DPP said? I wish to reiterate the importance of these declarations in combating corruption and maintaining public trust. Where I to feel like oh you feel, Paula, to follow through and my warning of certain prosecution. You hear what the DPP said? Not only would the credibility of my office be damaged, but it would also set a harmful president that laws can be disregarded without consequence. Paula Lovelin, you hear that? Paula Lovelin, you hear this, what this DPP is saying? That if she doesn't act, right? The president's of wrongdoing seems to continue, right? These charges will carry full weight of the Integrity in Public Life Act with potential fines up to 30 million 30, 30, sorry 30,000 are imprisonment for up to three years this should serve as a tough reminder of seriousness and wish the federal government you understand view non-compliance with the law take it away take it away let me talk to let me talk to the Jamaican people so this has nothing to do with politics right this has nothing to do with politics this is a very serious, very serious, serious president that Paula Llewellyn is setting as it relates to the turmoil that she's bringing in her office, bringing her office into disrepute. Paula Llewellyn, you are bringing your office into disrepute. She has brought what she has done. Right? And so then when you look at that and you look at the example that the Nevis DPP set and said, Right, that if she doesn't have right, her office is a failure. But you, Paula Llewellyn, in spite, in spite of clear breaches, freedom. I think it was singing group fears for fears that some everybody wants to rule the world. Some people want to rule you, and some people want to be ruled by you. Now, blessing um, freedom. Now, when you think of Paula Llewellyn's tolerance 
right, to corruption as it relates to Andrew Oness led government. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you know what is going to be unbelievable? Friday when I come and I get into Admat, it is going to be serious when people, when I, I have every investigation on Admat. So I'll be coming out on Friday with that. We don't look on the level of corruption, right? Andrew Oles, because he knows very well that he has the DPP on his side. Right? And the DPP, between the DPP and the corruption prosecutor, right? The, 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 the delay, right? The dragging out, right? And the truth be told, Paula Lumelin can overstep everything there. Thing that caused in the stall, Paula Lowellin office permits Paula Lowellin. Paula Lowellin office is extremely powerful. Paula Lowellin can step in and charge and have Andrew Owner's charge. Right? Simply, the Integrity Commission is waiting on certain documents, right, to have the Prime Minister's statutory declaration certified. And that document is not forthcoming. And you are going to tell me that the Prime Minister should file Monday. Monday gone. Right? Tuesday. Okay, Monday was an holiday. So Tuesday, the Prime Minister was supposed to file. And I can tell you, people, that is not going to be certified. So then here we have it. Here we have it. That you're going to have the Prime Minister statutory declaration for 2001. Right? He filed his statutory declaration. But what happened? It cannot certify. He filed 22. Right? What happened? It cannot certify. He filed 20, 20, um, 23. And I rest assured it is not going to be verified. Friday when I come out. Right? And get into Admat, you are going to realize why the Prime Minister's statutory declaration will never ever, will never ever verify. And you are going to tell me that Paul Lumelin, who sits at the helm, right, of our prosecution system, right? Sits, sits, and allow that to take place, right? And so then, when the integrity commission, the integrity investigators, integrity commission investigators are doing their work, right? They want to make it seems like the invest the integrity um um commission investigators don't know what they are doing, right? Um, <laughs> Don't know what they are doing. Baron, why do you think Andrew extended Paul Lovelin antenna? Yes, Mega, for the very same reasons. For the very same reasons. Right? It's extremely blatant. So blatant, Nard Star. They have to go to prison. Right, Nard Star, I agree with you. I agree with you. This is not that they are hiding. It is so blatant. It's so up in your face. The stench smells. A million miles away. Kanju is totally criminally inclined. Right? And I agree with that later, bro. Right? So obvious. So plain. And yet, and yet the DPP sits there. Right? If I don't blame anyone else, like the corruption prosecutor, I have to blame the DPP. Must give the DPP blame. Because she sits and have her office in disrepute. Right? It's a shame, Paula Lovelin. Shame on you. Right? That's why I show the example of the same kids, DPP. And what she stands for, 
in saying that her office can to ensure justice being done. But Paula Lovelin, unlike you, you stand to ensure that you cover up corruption and make sure that injustice carries on. Right? Totally wrong. And so then the day that we see the back of you, Paula Lovelin, right? It is hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is finally over. Right? The day we see the back of you. Now, I am going to show people something that I have spoken about. Some time ago, some time ago I've spoken about this Jamaica Labour Party government, right? Involving some serious dilemma. And what seems to be their political strategy, right? That as a result of it happened, may happen a long time ago, right? Their political strategy now is, okay, people forget. So you know what? Yes, we have done it, but we can blame the, um, the People's National Party um, for our crime, basically. And so then that definitely is their strategy. But guess what? We are here now in social media, right? And in the era of technology, we can go back in time. And we can remind you. I'm going to play a clip. And I want people to listen what is coming out of Damon Crawford mouth. Right? To the Jamaica Labour Party. Right? This is a whole clip. But I want you to listen. What Damon Crawford was saying. And remember I spoke about it. As it relates to the United States had given intelligence to Bruce Golden and Bruce Golden take that intelligence and give it a name, Bruce Golden. Take the intelligence and give it to the criminal. Can you imagine people, the head of the government, prime minister of a country, that has never, never happened with the, um, the People's National Party. But without delay, let me show you and you listen to what Damian Crawford is saying. Uh, Mystic Sensation host for a lie within is one of the biggest injuries of justice in Jamaica. And Earl Stabba, definitely so. You are 100% right. She, Paula Lovelin, right in that office. Right, is a serious injustice to the Jamaican people. Serious injustice to the Jamaican people, and that is that, and that is a fundamental wrong. Now, um, let us um play this um clip um as it relates to Damon Crawford. Um, oh. Critiqued state of emergency by the government side. That well, is Senator, saying, Senator, you know, I don't want to interrupt you. Please don't. But in the interest, no man, in the interest of fairness and honesty, what you are reading from is a policy paper. You need to read the Smith Commission report on the 76 oh. state of emergency. That's what you are to read. No, what you need that to do refer to is the to WhatsApp your group no, and tell them what to the read. That is what you need to do. You cannot tell me that's what you with are to all due respect. You want to tell me you how can, to vote, you, how to think, you, how to read, I can't how to tell speak. You, that. you don't involve yourself today. You, that. you must do, strike that from the record can do is tell and put it in the WhatsApp group. All I tell can them do. what to read, they have read nothing. <laughs> so you won't tell them what All to read. I can do is tell the people of Jamaica not to be misled. I don't want nothing more, Mr. Misled. President, with you respect. You read the Smith you Commission. You cannot intervene. Where they were signing blank detention, Listen, blank detention. I want to know up, from you, Mr. President. Unlock up friend, Babsy Grange, Listen. with blank detention form. That you for read. Mr. President. And Lambert yes. Ground, you don't even bother start because you no, walk in on very sticky ground. Yes, all right, I hear you. What I want, Mr. President, if these numbers are untrue, if 
you are suggesting that a government, which this document is from the government, is willing to be untruthful in the number of guns found, is willing to be untruthful in the number of persons arrested and charged, then why should we feel that you are totally truthful on that side if you are suggesting that this document is not worthy of being read? Why is it that we should think so? But because I wasn't born in 1976, I will move forward to 2018, a period for which I was an adult. In 2018, Mr. President, January, Matthew was there? January 2018, the government put forward that there was a need for a state of emergency. Before that, Mr. President, in August, sorry, in May 2010, in advance of the attempts to arrest Christopher Dodders Cook, an extradition warrant, a state of emergency, was declared by Prime Minister Goldie. Now let us not forget with all the accusations about who is for and who is not for criminal activity. The greatest defense by a person suspected of criminal engagement was made by the government of the Jamaica Labour Party in 2007. They went as far as to hire lawyers and lobbyists on his behalf. None of them can claim that I, because the Prime Minister was a senior member of the Jamaica Labour Party the leader of government business and a member of the cabinet who made those decisions to defend what the United States referred to as one of the greatest violence producers in the Western world. You cannot compete nor compare. I cannot compete nor compare. So when mystic sensation comes here, and speak it. We speak the truth as a result of our research. Can the marks rot it? What's wrong with Jamaican people? When we when we wake up, shake my head. When you have the Prime Minister, right, working with the United States. An intelligence share and the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister, unbelievable, unbelievable, did what he had done, did what he had done, sharing that intelligence with the very same subject that the United States investigated and go above and beyond in getting lawyers to defend him. That is not out of my mouth. Right, you have heard that as it relates to what Damian Crawford said. But if you think Damian Crawford, right, is just speaking political rhetorics, let us bring forward the clip of evidence as it relates to right record information right by the cia let us show the evidence so that jamaican people can wake up and a little bit around doing jamaica labor party are done right it is that little bit of turmoil Jamaica Labour Party put the country in. Right? Mega what? Barack Obama told Bruce that the JLP was corrupt and forced him to step down. Thank you, Mega what? Right? So, I don't know Jamaica Labour Party corrupt. The history of corruption. Right? They created FINSA. And Nigel Clark in Parliament flinging red card <laughs> and holding on to the FinSAC report. 
right? That's the blood card for you. That's the blood card for you, right? Why you don't really need the Vincent report? Because your party, along with you and your prime minister, right, help to spread the lies as it relates to Finsa. Help to spread the lies as it relates to Trophigura. And the many lies that you have told. And so then for some people who believe that the People's National Party and the Jamaica Labour Party, right, are one of a kind, I want you to listen to this video. You understand? To say that it is not political rhetoric coming from Damian Crawford, but facts indeed. And so then, without any delay, honey, lift up the evidence so that our people can see. Yes, Carla, you're on Mystic Sensation Live. Please go ahead. Yes, quick suggestion. You hear me now? Yes. The, ambassador, you know, the GLP party, you know, them commit the most atrocity against Jamaica people. You know. You're right. The coral guard right up to Kivali in, in Kiesha. You're right. They commit the most atrocity against Jamaica people. And I just the, the normal support that you know, we are at the end. The end of the party, them commit the most atrocity again. And that's a fact. Even against their own people. That's a fact. Even against their own people. And one more thing before we go. You see all in labor right? Then we could know where I come man. They say, you see all enough for them with the pan from peace and land. Where they not have peace for them. Huh? Let them stay there, man. Speak up, my brother. Take and also, no Exactly. They will lose everything. Yeah. What you said is true, my friend. And stand by because you know, mystic sensation of the evidence to um to prove what you just said. So stand by, my friend. Blessings. Yeah, man. Bless up yourself. Bless All up right. yourself. Cool. Blessings. Now, let us show the people that okay, what the man prophet said, and remember, right? I spoke this prayer to us hearing the man prophet. I'm talking about it. Right, so let us play um, the clip so that people can witness, Jamaican people can witness what happened. Take that away. Now, my Jamaican people, there's a fundamental reason tonight why I played that clip. For it to sleep in our consciousness today of what had transpired. And as a result of the Jamaica Labour Party that we are dealing with today, let me remind you the hard work as it relates to reason with Ratigan, the One Jamaica Legal Defense Fund Foundation. Foundation that we need to support. Listen to me, people. There's a reason why we need to have a base of protection for our people. Because what? To come. Let me tell you, we have seen it extremely clear to us as it relates to where Andrew Owens is going. A lot of persons 
I've seen it. PSOJ, silence. Paralumily, silence. Andrew Holness, and I keep on saying it. Most powerful weapon that he has. Andrew Holness, most powerful weapon that he has is is 48 members of parliament who is going to vote on any decision that Andrew Holness want to make. This is serious, people. This is serious. I explain to you as it relates to why the Integrity Commission Act was passed, not because Andrew Wallace wanted it to pass. In 2016, if you go back and you look on the electoral map, GLP 132, PNP 131, and so then, Andrew Wallace could not defeat that. Could not defeat that. And so then while he's acting like hypocrite, which he is a hypocrite, and continue to be a hypocrite, a diabolical liar, acting as if he supports the Integrity Commission, Andrew Holmes will never support the Integrity Commission Act. Andrew Holmes, the timeline of Andrew Holmes' investigation, Andrew Holness have been investigated from two to, between the period 2007 to 2009. So you tell me if Andrew Holness, stand up. If you, Andrew Holness did have the power that he have in 2020, the Integrity Commission Act will not, would not pass. It would not. So don't make them look like hypocrites. As it relates to her, as if he was instrumental in allowing the act to pass. And both sides of the house voted. Now, let me show you the significant reason for my argument. Andrew Holness fits, fits on the impeachment bill. So if Andrew Holness was for justice, was for good governance, would he sit on the impeachment bill? People don't see the dictatorship tendency of Andrew Holness. And let me say this to people. Let me say this to Andrew Holness. That if he remains in power, you will never, ever see an impeachment bill. Andrew Holness is Jamaica's greatest virus. People take it from me. Andrew Holness is Jamaica's greatest virus. When you have a government who are decided from day one to break the parliamentary norms as it relates to signing the code of conduct. And he decided not to do that. The PSOJ stood silent. Nothing coming from the PSOJ in pressuring him to say to him that's wrong. What sort of justification the head of a government can have not to sign the code of conduct as per now in parliament? What sort of justification you could have? And so then you realize that Andrew Owen's action premeditated 
And so then once again, I am saying a significant reason, right? To prepare for what to come, that we galvanize ourselves around the one Jamaican legal defense foundation, right? Because Rattigan is doing a wonderful work. And people we need to provide strength and give foundation basis for what to come. Now, let us go into the red card man. Mr. Nigel Clark stood in parliament and make utterances of lies. If you notice people, when he had spoken, I decided to make it breeze off because I need to do my research and bring forth, um, bring forward, bring it forward to people so that people can understand. Janet Jones, take that to Jamaica. That's what, That's what they are. Thank you, Jan Jan. Right? Bless up yourself, Jan Jan. So now let us look as it relates to Nigel Clark, right? Spitting out venom of lies. Nigel Clark, who is the protector, the cleaner. So then when we talk about the cleaner, whatever wrong that he had done, he tried to cover it, right? Because they know they have their prosecutorial positive, the DPP, right? And so, of course, they can flex because they have strength at bucketing, right? You don't have a DPP who is going to call them out on their wrongdoing, right? The DPP in tune with the corruption by not inserting herself as it relates to where justice needs to be done. And so then, let us hear Nigel Clark and his fanatics, right, in Parliament. Without any delay, let us find this clip. Once again, people, thank you for being here. I appreciate that. So, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, cannot be trusted. This Madam Speaker is a problem. It's a problem for Jamaica. And you know why it's a problem for Jamaica? Because government and opposition have to work together. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah? And so the opposition leader contradicting, undermining, and emasculating the very people he has appointed, Madam Speaker, is inimical to constructive working relationship. For example, Madam Speaker, it is customary for the house leader on the government side and the leader of an opposition business on that side to get together and to talk about matters concerning the house and how issues are going to be dealt with. And Madam Speaker, in those conversations, they have to make decisions on the fly. They have to agree on the fly, whether it's behind here or it's on the phone. Madam Speaker, the leader of opposition in the house has been in this house for 30 years, including the Senate. 30 years. We have to be able to rely on his word as opposition, leader of opposition business. But how can we rely on what he says when the opposition leader forces flip flop, unprincipled behavior? And he emasculates and undermines his own colleagues. Mm -hmm. That's, it may not be good for their party, but it's certainly not good for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And the member 
from St. Andrew Southeastern, who has put for, has responsibility to the shadow. He's an opposition sportsman and finance. How can we rely on his word when he's publicly ridiculed, emasculated, and undermined in that way? That is not leadership, Madam Speaker, that anyone can trust. Madam Speaker, the opposition leader can publicly emasculate Philip and Julian. They may not have people to speak up for them, but let me tell you this. Don't touch Juliet. Madam Speaker, under this government, even, even after the worst economic crisis in our history, Jamaica's macroeconomic fundamentals are the strongest they've been for 50 years. And we are leveraging, leveraging that economic stability in the people's interest. We're entrenching fiscal responsibility by strengthening fiscal rules and birthed in a new institution, the Fiscal Commission, to increase the incentives for fiscal sustainability and magnify the disincentives for pursuing a part of fiscal recklessness. We Jamaicans have paid a heavy price for the absence of fiscal responsibility, Madam Speaker. And it is my fervent hope that fiscal responsibility will become not only rooted in institutionally, but will be firmly anchored in hearts and minds. No, Madam Speaker, the opposition leader advances a narrative of rescuing Jamaica in the 2012 to 2016 period to suggest that fiscal responsibility started then. Madam Speaker, I have a lot of respect for the for former Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, for her work, for her achievements, and for Peter Phillips, the finance minister in her administration. But I do not believe that that justifies a distortion of the facts. It was Prime Minister Bruce Golding and Audley Shaw who had the audacity and the courage to point out that the economic policies of the 1989 to 2007 administration were unsustainable and reckless. Madam Speaker, for periods during that 18 year stretch, just two expenditure items in salary exceeded tax revenues. Just imagine that. No, no garbage truck, no bus, no truck, no asphalt, no police car, no uniform, no nothing for the path people, path uh, persons on path, nothing for pensions, just interest and wages alone exceeded tax revenues. The, that administration, Madam Speaker, put up a chart with the deficits, ran large deficits for 11 consecutive years between 1996-97 and 2006-07. The charts showing the deficits will soon come up. Very large deficits. Madam Speaker, if you look at the deficits here, these are the deficits between 1996-97 and 2006-07. Deficits 5, 6% year after year after year. These deficits became unsustainable. And it should not be surprising that it was during this period that represented one of the fastest rises in Jamaica's debt. A five-fold increase in our debt, or 500%, Madam Speaker, in this 11-year period. From 184 billion, Madam Speaker, in March 1996 to 923 billion dollars in March 2007. The 1989 to 2007 administration. And if you start earlier, there was a ninefold increase, 950 percent increase in Jamaica's debt from March of 1992 to March of 2007. 950 percent, Madam Speaker. From about nine, 90 something billion to 923 billion. So, this, this is the, this man speaker is the ferocious, torrential, and unsustainable fiscal current that the Bruce Golden.
Okay, you have, a, you have a current that is blowing. Okay. Now, this, these are the vicious lies that Nigel Clark stood in Parliament, right, and told the Jamaican people. And you know, I'm glad that I have the evidence tonight. Where Nigel Clark is claiming that it is the Bruce Golden government who sets fiscal discipline when it is the Bruce Golden government wrecking and we are Nigel Clark spoke between the period of 2012 to 2016 that Portia Simpson lacks the physical discipline people that's what Nigel Clark said Totally disingenuous. But people don't hear from me. I am going to give you the information what the IMF said that is going to counter what Nigel is saying. And so then here is Nigel Clark, right? Student parliament, right? Filled with lies and spewing out venoms of lies and deceit. Lies and deceit, just like what they have done with FinSA. Right? Now, people, I am going to show you the document as it relates to even the IMF applaud Osha Simpson for success. Bruce Golden had wrecked the economy. And Portia Simpson, who had to take a wrecked economy and fix it, stay on the austerity measures of the IMF. But people, I am going to let you read the document for yourself and so when I stand here and hear Nigel Clark speaking all those lies, all those lies, it's a crying shame. So for the Jamaican Labour Party people who stand up and hear that, now for the local, locally and in the diaspora, let me show you the real facts of what transpired there and show you what Portia Simpson and Peter Phillips had done when Bruce Golden damaged the economy. It was so bad that the IMF writers are so bad that the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, wrote us up. So look, people, let me show you that information. Without any further ado, let me just go to that and let the people see it for themselves. Right, we have the history here. Yeah. Now, people, here it is. Told you don't know. Yeah. Jamaica passes eight IMF tests, right? Nigel Clark said before, between the period 2012 people as we hear to 2016. This is 16 of June 2015. So Nigel Clark, you did not see this or you did not know this? So Nigel Clark, I am reading this to you now, Nigel Clark. The Executive Board of the International Monetary Fund has confirmed that Jamaica has passed the eight consecutive tests under the four-year extended fund facility program. This development means the IMF will disburse 40 million to Jamaica. In a press release issued this morning, the IMF is also lauding plans by the Simpson Miller administration to achieve sustained economic growth. Nigel Clark, have you seen this? Did you do your research, Nigel Clark? The finance minister, Dr. Peter Phillips, announced last week 
that he expects a positive review from the fund today. More good news for the country economy. You hear that, Nigel Carr? An executive summary posted this morning on the website of the IMF stated all performance criteria have been met by Jamaica. You hear that, Nigel Carr? The only exception being the primary surplus balance, which was narrowly missed. According to the Washington based multilateral, the potential for the Jamaican economy to grow in a sustained way is gradually improving. You hear that, Nigel Clark? See, and physical discipline. So, too, the prospect for crucial investment being secured. You hear that, Nigel Clark? The IMF statement is projecting that the country economy will grow by about 2% this physical year. You hear that, Nigel Clark? According to the IMF, this prediction is buffered by the fact that the full year impact of lower oil prices and improvements from last year drought are beginning to materialize. An improvement in the business climate is also being noted. You hear that, Nigel Clark? The fund says reduced oil prices are expected to send inflation down faster than previously anticipated. Full marks are also being given to the Simpson Miller administration for implementation of its economic reform agenda, which the IMF says remain in good standing. You hear that, Nigel Clark? You hear that, Nigel Clark? Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips and his technocrats have been consistently criticized by the parliament opposition for failing to craft and implement a credible plan to go to make an economy in a significant way. But the IMF disagree with Ono because the IMF say Ono are all liars. Ono are propagandists. Ono are corruption. Take that away. Take that away. Let me talk to the people. Hmm? When you come, and you spit out your lies in Parliament, your political rhetoric in Parliament. Nigel Clark, have you done your research? Huh? Did you do your research, sir? Huh? Now, in that time, I'm freedom mystic. I think we need playing cards with all your facts and them to distribute to the people. Exactly. Now, let me ask you, Nigel Clark. Have you done your research, sir? The entire GLP is a bunch of liars. Yes. Huh? But you came out holding up red cards, spitting out venoms of lies. Right? In 2015, when you people are mumbling, right, the IMF said, shut up your mouth. Right? You're telling lies. Right? The Porsche Simpson led government, right, had performed well. I don't mean to say that enough. You know, just see the paper. It's the IMF stating it. Right? That is totally contrary in terms of what you are saying now, Nigel Clark. But you know what? I am going to let my friend answer you. I am going to let my friend now speak to you. So when you come with a mouth full of lies, mystic sensation is here to correct you and curve you and guide you. What you need to do, we know that you're a diabolical liar. Right? We know that you have told us that the FBI was investigating SSL. And you're not going to leave no stones and turn. Red card for you, Nigel Clark. Red card for you. Right? We have known that the many lies that you have told as it relates to PNP cause FINSA. We know otherwise now. We don't have to even wait on your report. Red card for you, Nigel Clark. Red card. We know you are liars and propagandists. Right? You are here to destroy democratic socialism. But we are here to speak the truth. We are here to reflect you in history. We are here to tell you that we stand resolute. Speak the truth and make it right. So then, let me make Brother Damian Crawford, right, speak to you in kind. Without any further ado, please, 
allow me to give you Damian Crawford. Talk to them, brother Damian. Yeah. Observing, learning, and participating. And I see a few that seem intent on being here in short order. After done with a big friend, I would have to equally make some friendship. <laughs> Especially because my wife did not go to St. Andrew. Uh, you see, listen now, these, these people have been farming from people around this side. But, <laughs> but Mr. President, before I even start my presentation, I think that there are some things that does need a little clarity um, as we move forward. The first is the whole concept of no new taxes. That's been a big debate. I don't know why it is so important because it don't seem to be a political point for the voters. The voters don't seem to be acting upon the promise of no new taxes. And the last election um, in the 26th of February would suggest that having said it a million times, it was a very little moment. And there is some confusion as to who won the last election. Just today, we hear over that side said that they won the election. And over this side said that we won the election. I think the only fair solution is a rematch. <laughs> so they should call the general election and let us see who really won the election. We don't want it quarrel 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 because i remember the night of the election our side was happy mm -hmm. and their side was sad so therefore it seemed they were happy they were sad that they won and they would suggest that we were happy that we lost but <laughs> But let me just put a little mathematics to it based on some numbers presented by Senator Bontin and leader of the opposition, um, Mark Golden. It is mathematically impossible for the increase in the taxes collected to be as a result of economic activity, yet taxes as a percent of GDP increases. It's a mathematic impossibility. Let us examine. If GDP, which measures economic activity at point one is four, and taxes at point one is two, if economic activity increases further or greater than tax collection, then the denominator increases greater than the numerator, creating a smaller percentage. Mm -hmm. So if at point one, tax as a percent of GDP was 24%, and at point two, tax... But that's the, point, that's the point I'm making. That's the point I'm making. No, 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 no. We'll come to that second point. I'm saying... One second, one second. It has been presented that there are one, two, three, four reasons, one of which is economic activity. If economic activity is outpacing the numerator tax collection, then the 24 at 2015 should not be 28 at 2024. It should be 23, 22, 21, etc. I, and, and I am not in the tax thing to understand more than just the mathematics of it don't make sense. The second problem they have is the concept of tax per capita. Tax per capita kind of assumes that everybody pays the same tax. Just like we have income per capita. It's a, if everybody made the same income, what would that income be? It is not a truthful representation. It is now 7,000 per capita, but some people making 70,000 and some people making 1,700. But if everybody made the same, the per capita taxes Senator Bunting reported has increased 
by almost $190,000 per person. Within a society, there will be people who are dependent like children and people who are independent like some adults who earn. And there will be some adults who are not earning and also dependent. But when you put the per capita, it wipes out all of that. It says each person is paying X amount. The argument that more people are employed when 83% of the people employed don't pay income tax, they were below the threshold. <laughs> so the only way the more people employed could have been the basis is if they were in the 17%, the higher threshold. <laughs> the probability of that to be true is unlikely. Most entrance within the employment would... One second. The poor don't pay income tax. The poor don't pay income tax. I'm explaining that. I'm coming to that. So, 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 so therefore, what it means, therefore, is that the, 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 the only contribution from those not paying income tax is in the VAT tax, the value added tax called the GCT. But they were eating before. They never start eat when they start work. Otherwise, they wouldn't have survived to start work. So they were eating before. And so therefore, all it means is if each person on average is paying more, then more must be collected from these people. It is not a matter of efficiency because you have negated that by saying each person is paying by the per capita amount. But it not, and it's not a big deal because nobody votes for that. Because with all you are saying, the lady Senator Bunting spoke to votes on if her life is better off or worse off. Whether you want tax or no tax, she is going to measure her opinion on how I feel about my current circumstances. The only thing is because I have some students here. I have to correct the mathematical... Yes, yes, yes. Because I'm having some coming up and I don't want that to Huh? Not mathematical. You can add now another option to say you're more efficient, but efficiency is negated by the per capita. Because efficiency would mean I'm collecting from more people. It's negated by the per capita because those persons were calculated in them. But make with that Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. All right. Yeah, with that shoulder. The second thing I want, and this is important for us to consider, is the whole productivity conversation. The productivity conversation is somewhat misplaced in Jamaica because we fail to acknowledge that service economies often report lower productivity. In economics, it's called the Baumol disease. The Baumol disease says the characteristics of service cause for it to find difficulty in productivity. Let us look at one characteristic, perishability. The service ends when the person leaves. So therefore, if you're working in dance factory, you can make your 10 for the day. And you can store five if five don't sell. The hotel don't have that capacity. If the room don't full tonight, it just don't full tonight. It can't store it for tomorrow. That reduces the, 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 the productivity. It also assumes inseparability. The client must be present. So therefore, if a waitress can serve 10 people, but only three people did it, seven is wasted, she can't do nothing. But if I can make 10 chair and only three people, it don't matter. I can make my 10 chair and put down seven. It, so a lot of people, people at the tax office, them they they not do nothing, not do nothing, not do nothing until two. <laughs> and when everybody come now, we say, boy, they're unproductive. Can them only serve three people for the day. It, the, that inseparability. If we're going to really look upon the productivity conversation, we might need to look at the structure of our economy to maybe shift to some level of manufacturing and other things that don't of the Baumol disease. This is a global conversation. So therefore, it is a, and I am not suggesting that there's not need for productivity gains. 
I'm saying if the economy continues to do more hotels and more services, yeah. we are going to have a fight mm -hmm. to yeah. get those productivity gains. Yeah. And so therefore, the structure of the economy will impact on the measured productivity because of that. The final productivity impact of services is variability. Your learning over time don't give you equal benefit because the requirements vary so greatly. So when you learn to make a table, you make a table, you make a table, you eventually become a perfect table maker. When you serve a person, serve a person, because you're not serving the same person, mm -hmm. it don't give you equal efficiency. And so that also becomes a quarrel mm -hmm. of the you can please when you're serving. So therefore, but these are things that researchers have. have right. Right. It's not a, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Obama write economic books. Okay. Yes, yes. But, but, and, I, and I'm not saying that we don't need more productivity. I'm saying that a service economy must factor the service component. Yeah, 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 yeah. And debated. Others have agreed with that. That the Baumol disease don't exist. But others have agreed with me. So if we're going to really look into it, then we have to look into all aspects of it so that we can have a fulsome conversation. But today, the budget presentation and the budget is really, no, that is Kamina. A capture of, she always had these beautiful flags. And, yes, yes, yes. Is a capture of ideas. The budget is indicating what is important to us, what's our priority, how much you think we should spend on it, and, and is a capture of ideas. And so therefore, we have to now seek to understand ideas. And ideas is the product of politics. It is for this reason why you'll find political parties seek to defend ideas because it's the product of politics. It is what we sell. And to this extent, um, we will come today to discuss those ideas. In the stop it here, guys. All right. So um, just let me just um, stop it there. Right, and so basically, um, in a nutshell, what um, Damien um, Crawford is saying that we have to move away from this sort of service economy, right, and try to get in manufacturing, right, so that right we can we can actually um, grow the economy, right, and I do endorse that. Now. I have noticed that you have, you know, few narratives um, out there, right? Um, and one of those um, narratives saying that 18 years, you know, when the People's National Party in power, right? They have done nothing for 18 years. And so then on their political campaign, they sing that song and they continue to sing that song. And as I said, the series of lies, the venom, the venom of lies that they continue to spread. Right? Well, the truth and in fact, when you look on the People's National Party, right, over the period of time and from its inception, the People's National Party always focus in pushing the country forward. As it relates to Norman Manley, right? The genesis of democratic socialism to Michael Manley. And what we have seen in contrary as it relates to the Jamaica Labour Party the carrying down and the pulling down, right? So each time that the People's National Party take two steps forward, the Jamaica Labour Party taking three steps backward. Because each time that people allow themselves to be convinced by the Jamaica Labour Party and we put them in power, the evidence 
clear evidence goes to show that the apparent attack on our treasury. Whenever the Jamaican Labour Party in power, our treasury suffers. And what is evident is that we have seen this incumbent government make every move in protecting wrongdoers. As it relates to rural Reed, who helped to damage our education system, and Jonas and the system as it relates to the DPP tends to make it play out. Yes, to make it play out. And so then it seems as if it is going into a situation where rural Reed might just escape the long arms of the law. So while they talk about 18 years, right, that they can't see what the PNP had done, simultaneously, they are using the PNP program for, 18, for the 18 years. Ironically, they accuse the People's National Party, right, as it relates to low performance within the 18 years. But if you compare that 18 years to the eight years of what Andrew Owens had done, Andrew Owens has made absolutely no progress, no progress on, um, whatsoever. He criticized the Jamaican army, he criticized the People's National Party when they're in power, as it relates to making you know our energy system electricity be affordable that did not happen that did not happen people are crying out crying out as it relates to the expense that they have to pay so then without any further delay let us get into what the pnp has done over the years and show jamaican people right the policies right that were put in by the pnp and still been using by the jamaican labor party right now all right so let us get into that we disappeared um hold on okay so are you are you hearing or there's, we're back, so they're seeing and hearing. Let's see what happened. Um, you're back. Okay. Okay. So we're back. I'm going to try it again. Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. So are they seeing it? I'm seeing what happened. Yes, they're seeing it. Okay. So this is um Michael Manley. I'm going to make sure I zoom it in. Um, so we don't want Michael Manley era. We are going to go to PJ Patterson and we are going to go to Porsche. Just to point out to them as it relates to what I've done and the programs that they are using, right? Now, let us look. Oh, wait. Let's go down um, here. All right. Okay, I've got it. All right. Um, here it is, people. The most honorable Percival James Patterson and party president, 1992 to 2006. Prime Minister, 1992 to 2006. So this is what, this is the era that Jamaica Labour Party is attacking, 
Let us look people and show the people. Right? Um, okay. Now, <clears throat> it's stated People's National Party, hundreds of reasons, right? ESOP gave workers a greater stake through ownership in business. Oh, hold on, I think I'm reading the wrong thing here. Okay. Right, okay. So it starts from 70 years. Scroll up. It's, it's, it's counting down from Manly Iran, whatever. So oh, okay. So it's counting. Right. Okay. It's counting up all of them. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm sorry about that, um, folks. All right, so P.J. Patterson, the architect of the modernization of Jamaica, physical and economic infrastructure, is the only Jamaican prime minister. People, I want to... ...victory in three consecutive general elections. Under P.J. Patterson's leadership, more Jamaicans own land, had access to decent shelter, access to water electricity and telephone service than ever before his non-confrontational style was a major contributing factor to the decline in partisan political violence by the time he retired in 2006 pj patterson earned the distinction of being the longest serving prime minister of jamaica and the reason for that of course, because of the tremendous thing that he had done. Let us begin. 73, the modernization and expansion of the infrastructure of the island, island's airport, seaport, and territorial waters to enhance the environment for investment. The construction of a modern highway system beginning with Highway 2000 right? The one that you see Andrew Holness um, standing on, and a mind sharp, he wants to claim it. 75, construction of North Coast Highway from Negril to Port Antonio. Preparation and rollout of tourism master plan for sustainable tourism, tourism development. Major tourism expansion. New Ritz Carlton Hotel. Grand Palladium Hotel, Grand Bahia Principe Hotel, Iberia Star Hotel, Sanders White House Hotel, Secret Resorts, Royal One, Two, Three, and Four Hotels, among others. 77, approximately 30,000 jobs created in the tourism sector. Let us look again, people. 78. Jamaica visited by a record 3 million stopover and cruise tourists in 2006. Falmouth Cruise Ship Pier built. Port Marion Marina built. Montego Bay Convention Center built. Tourism Enhancement Fund created. Tourism Product Development Company TPD co farmed. South Coast Tourism expanded. Significant expansion of bauxite and aluminum production. Jamaica Deposit Insurance Corporation, JIDIC, was created to protect depositors in the banking system. Created the Financial Service Commission, FSC, to regulate the non banking financial institution after right, FinSAC damage as it relates to GLP. Edward Siaga. So after Edward Siaga had done his damage, right? PJ Patterson had created CTR papers in the evidence here. PJ Patterson created the Financial Service Commission to regulate the non-banking financial institution after the damage that Edward Philip Jad Siaga and Dan Crawford had done. There is the evidence. 88, foreign exchange market liberalized. Fair Trade Commission created. Personal income tax rate reduced from 33 and a quarter to 25% to provide more disposable income to taxpayers. 91. 
expansion of the mandate of the art trust by establishing the national training agency to serve the workforce now a lot more a lot of things pj pat has not done 92 unemployment reduced subst substantially reaching a record low of 9.6 percent in 2006 93 64 64 schools built and refurbished including 17 new basic primary and high school in western jamaica 94 national youth service reintroduced in 1994 um 95 provided free textbooks in schools at a cost of 3.3 billion dollars government sustained that early childhood commission established the establishment of national council of education poverty eradication program reduced poverty to nine percent in 2006 from 30 percent in 1989 want to hear that people now and remember that period as it relates to 80 right was edward philip george siaga period but let me remind people and and peter patterson went in poverty eradication program reduced poverty to nine percent in 2006 from 30 percent in 1989 introduce introduced the poverty alleviation to health and education part program the glp now they use significant growth in the national insurance fund generating a larger pool of funds for the provision of social security benefits and assist in reducing poverty under the national insurance scheme the ni goal health plan was established to provide health services to pension to pensioners the establishment of jamaica social investment fund the establishment of the national health fund jamaica drug for the elderly program jdap introduced some 50 new ambulances were commissioned into service for the health sector not like um what um this minister of um health is doing right now wrecking our hospital 106 hospital built not not, not what tufton is doing now hospital built and upgraded Millpen, mandeville anthony bay st Anne's bay black river kph Bellevue, Conwell regional falmouth and look from when the J jamaica labor party they deal with Conwell regional hospital and that cannot finish now 107 regional health authorities established to improve management of our healthcare system. Now, look, people, and they talk about 18 years of non performance. JP, wicked and lie. 108 Public Broadcasting Corporation of Jamaica established. 109 UNPJ Policy Administration Information Technology IT was promoted as a vital sector of the economy. 110 liberalization of the telecommunication sector enabled the introduction of additional service providers which resulted in hundreds of thousands of cellular phones being available to all jamaicans 111 establishment of the office of utility regulation 112 liberalization and expansion of the media market more tv and radio stations and establishment of the cable industry right Pass access to information up the establishment of central information technology office establish the universal access funds now the universal service fund the establishment of the sports development foundation stadiums built in farmer trelawney flag of it and catching and catching all in montego bay many multi-purpose courts and community play fields were also built and upgraded the establishment of the national environment plan and look what they life on pj jesus peace look how much light they tell from pj what them are people are really like 119 created the national commission on science and technology in 1993 to accelerate national development 120 the establishment of the culture arts arts sports and education chase fund what jp jp now they use major housing expansion resulted in some 
150,000 houses built in 18 years up to 2007. And true, right? How much of them Andrew and Ness built? What is for eight years? <laughs> Just imagine, right? Now, 122 establishment of the National Housing Development Corporation. 123 land ownership expanded through land titling operation pride emancipation land projects the establishment of national solid waste management authority 125 through the liberalization of the motor vehicle import policy ordinary jamaicans were now able to own a motor vehicle look at that 126 the establishment of the jamaica urban transit company Right Limited, JUTC, the new transport centers built at Alfred Tree and in Montego Bay, the establishment of the National Work Agency. Right, 129, the establishment of the Postal um, Corporation of Jamaica um, Limited. Let us, um, this thing, okay. All right, 130, yeah. National Contract Commission was established, 131. Office of the Public Defender was created. 132, Office of Professional Responsibility, the Bureau of Special Investigation and the Police Public Complaint Authority was set up to monitor and investigate all police excesses. 133, established the Corruption Prevention Commission. 134, um, implemented the Possibilities Program with a care center and a skills employment center for children and youth living and working on the streets, right? 135, expanded gender equity and enhanced family life through legislation such as Domestic Violence Act 1996, Property Rights and Spouses Act 2003, Child Care and Protection Act 2004, legislation dealing with early childhood education and security of daycare center. Right, um, one, okay, 136, yeah, Create, created emancipation park for recreation and entrepreneurial activities, such as market physical activities for children, walking or jogging, cultural and art activities and community events, implemented the 2.5 billion lift up Jamaica community improvement program, and Lord Jesus, more still today. All right. And that is um portion. Let us um take it away. Right. So there it is, people. The 18 years that they're going on their champion, saying that no improvement done for 18 years. So you want to tell me now. All of those things that you have read, Rosalie, this is an eye-opening for us to think about our children and grandchildren, future to come. To so all of what PJ Patterson had done, I want Jamaican people, locally and in the diaspora, I want you to listen. I want Jamaica to listen. Six things. We now give, we now give Andrew on a ten. Six things. What Andrew Holness had done. Eight years. And Jamaican people, I am talking to you. I am talking to the voters. PJ Patterson had done more than 137 right, programs being installed and effectively used up until today. So you tell me, people, list me six things. Six, I want six things that Andrew Holness had done. And I don't mean the illicit six in it. Right, because we know, say, you understand, we give him the winnings for that. You understand, we give him the illicit six. But Jamaica people, let us start. Of all of what we have seen, I remember we don't read up push a Simpson yet enough. And remember, we don't go to um, Norman Manley and we left out Michael Manley. 
to when people are talking and saying that People's National Party and Jamaica Labour Party are one of a kind. People, use the country. Use the country. Right? Look at all the programs that have been implemented under the People's National Party. And I am asking now, right? Leave Megawatt vote up there because Megawatt seems to be only the brilliant um, student here that can tell me within the eight years of what Andrew Holness had done. So let us read what Megavolt stated there. Andrew Holness, eight years of achievement, SOE, Zozo, barefaced corruption, inside trading, and lies. <laughs> but you left out, you left out one and propaganda. Pure propaganda, lies and propaganda, right? And I just want Jamaican to be fair to us, right? I could only come up with five. <laughs> just, just imagine, right? Let us be fair to us. Let us be fair to us. Uh, let us put out the politics, right? Put out the politics out of it. I want people to list me. Six things. Six things. What Andrew Wallace led government had done. Six things. Right? And PJ Pattison had done over 137 vital programs. Vital programs. Right? Vital programs. The only thing that Andrew Wallace is now doing right as we can see the evidence clearly in corruption damage to our um, education system damage to our healthcare system come on original hospital let me say this to people and he's coming out and telling lies right what people need to do, people need to speak out and speak the truth. Because there is no work that is taking place at the Canal Regional Hospital. And millions more being budgeted to where the money is going. Where the money is going. Right? Janet Jones said the demolition of the um, Jamaica moral fiber. Our social fiber has been ripped. And this is no joke. No joke, people. So at the end of the day, we have to decide, right, as it relates to moving the country forward. Because under the Jamaica Labour Party, right, this country is not moving forward. Let me say this and say it loud and clear. The National Housing Trust that Michael Manley created for poor people is now being utilized out of the reach of poor people. Out of the reach of poor people. We have seen that NHT being robbed NHT money has been taken out and put into SSL. NHT money has been taken out and had given to Dexim. That is Andrew Wallet's friend. And what happened? Dexim kept that money for God, you know how long. Right? And where the NHT money, if it placed into a bank, interest could have grown on that. Right? And Dexim returned the money without no interest. Right? And NHT has no homes. Right? Nigel Clark and Andrew Holness have done that. So Nigel Clark, that's another, that's another red flag for you, sir. 
as it relates to what you people have done now to NXT. So poor people cannot afford NXT homes. Let us be realistic. And when we're talking about poor people, we are talking about the voting black. Yes, we are talking about what directly affects the electorate of Jamaica. And you're not seeing these things, right? Primelands. The ordinary Jamaicans can't own any prime lands. And you only had given them to his friend. And that is one of the reasons why PSOJ being protective of Andrew Holness because they are getting the benefits. They are getting the benefits. PSOJ, styling as it relates to anything what Andrew Holness do. Because guess what? All the prime lands been given to them. So when you look at these things, Right, the Jamaica Labour Party is so destructive to our people. Candy Max, but seriously, with all the exposure of the blatant corruption, what next? Well, very good question, Candy Max, and that is one of the reasons why we're here. Right? You ask the question, but serious you ask the question, but seriously, with all the exposure of the blatant corruption, what's next? Now, and that is one of the reasons why, again, I have to refer people in terms of, you know, um, contributing to the One Jamaica Legal Foundation as it relates to what Ratigan, right, um, is doing, right, and people in the diaspora, right, collaborating together, right, to defend our country, right, to defend our country. Now, I think... Um, you know, on a Tuesday, my time is actually limited. But Friday is going to be 100% investigation into ADMAT. And of course, um, we'll be having um, Major Robert Finzi in studio with us. We are trying to um, get um, Anissa Bell Rose um, in studio with us, um, depending on um, her schedule. Um, she will get back to me um, um, later on this week. We will have, um, of course, um, Aromatic in studio. And, of course, interesting as it relates to the ADMAT investigation, a lot of things will be revealing Right, a lot of things will be revealing. And so then, of course, that is going to show you that Andrew Holness, right, is in a lot of buying. A lot of buying. Right? Um, Edley Martin said the great Manly is the boss. And after Friday, Saturday, of course, Jainos and Reason with Ratigan. Mystic, mystic sensation will be on that as well. All right. So, and remember, people, to go over and support, right? Um, aromatic, right? Anita Bell Rose, right? Reason with Ratigan, right? You know the world works. Uh, we loan some, right? Big up on all those people, right? Who are, you know, make a change and wanting to see good governance. So, yes, that's it for us on a Tuesday, right? Once again, thank you for passing through, right? But Friday is going to be the eat in the house, right? Please be there. We'll be revealing a lot of stuff Friday, this Friday. All right. Um, Okay, Candy Max, education is where change starts. Educate, educating all the people can use the information to empower themselves to make informed, intelligent decisions to effect change. So true, can, uh, so true, um, Candy Max. Oh, Mr. Oh, Sensi. Oh. I'm answering Candy Max. Okay, answer. All right. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, mega good. Yes, but I'm happy for you being a guest and Rati. Okay. All right. The great manly, the boss. Yes, of course. Okay. All right, so you have it. All right, so thank you so much for your usual. He says, Yes, I know, but just hoping. As long as you have hope, yeah, then things are, are possible. As long as we don't lose hope, then at we the, can make change. At the end of the day, um, we have the information, right? Factual information as it relates to going against Jamaica Labour Party and propaganda, right? You have seen that we have now crushed, right, um, the FinSAC propaganda, right? And of course, um, the Chopagura, right, that they are um, speaking about, right? That wasn't any um, corruption, but just um, Jamaica Labour Party um, propaganda, right? The even time home, the burning down of the Eden Tide home that they want to put on the People's National Party, right? Obviously, was done by the Jamaica Labour Party. And obviously, it is Edward Philip George Siaga who had closed the case, right? So, there you go, there you have it, as it relates to the, pop the, uh, the propagandism of the Jamaica Labour Party. But out again, of the mouth of the CIA. all right, out of the mouth of the CIA, right? So, that's evidence that we have. Right, so we are here to fact check them. You understand? We are here to set them straight, and they are not going to pass through as it relates to their propaganda. And we want to hold them for all the corruption. We want to see judiciary process being done. Simple means person persons must be investigated, right, and put through the court system. Right, Daniel Taylor, we almost stop Andrew Wallace in his tracks on the way to destroy our beautiful Jamaica. Because we just cannot let down our ancestors after all that hard work for us to have our freedom um, today. Wonderful, Daniel. I love that. Right? We are in a very serious dilemma um, with this, gun, um, this government. And all the red flags there, all the red flags are there, is that this man is taken down to the point of dictatorship. Right? And we have to galvanize, right, to stop, to stop this vicious, wicked, and cruel government, right? So thank you again for passing through. All right. So again, um, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in on, on Tuesday. really appreciate everyone who joined us, both um, on your television, who, who uh, supporting us silently, and those in the chat. Thank you so much for making this such a... Uh, uh, meaningful um, discussion and thank you so much for the hard work that you keep putting into thank what you me. do so that you can um, educate and empower our people to go out there and make uh, informed intelligent decisions in order to effect change because everything starts with education knowledge is power and it doesn't make any sense you go out there and behave barbaric and start burning down and blocking down road and people losing their lives it doesn't solve anything. It just begets more viol um, violence. We have to uh, retaliate passively by educating people so that they know what to do comes election day because they've been empowered with the knowledge, right? So we have to um, educate people so that they can go out and make the right decision that is for them uh, in moving the country forward. The, 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 what they see is right for them. Okay, Daniel is saying, um, Jamaica is for Jamaica and it's not for sale under no circumstances whatsoever. We all need our beautiful beaches without having to be paying for entry. That's so true, Daniel. How did this government, this government is just suppressing its own people, right? It's all about their pockets. Yeah, taking all about people, their pockets. Taking people's farmland under the guise of putting up football field. Anyways, guys, so thank you so much. Hope everyone um, will have a wonderful and restful night. And um, 
Have a wonderful and productive rest of the week until Friday. Um, see you all. Have a wonderful and blessed, as I said, rest of the week. I'm repeating myself, no one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so stay travel on the gravel until Friday. Thank you. Love you all. Thanks. Mm -hmm.